May 12th. On this day we celebrate the memory of our Holy Father Epiphanius, Bishop of Salamina in Cyprus. Our Holy Father Epiphanius was born in 315 into a modest Jewish family from the village of Basandach near Eleftheropolis in Palestine. On the death of his father he was adopted by Trifon, a doctor of law who planned to give him his daughter in marriage. Possessed of a great zeal for learning from his youth, Epiphanius studied the holy scriptures and the institutions of Jewish life and faith at his side and learnt five languages, Greek, Latin, Hebrew, Syriac, and Coptic, a very rare achievement at that time. On Trifon's death, he inherited all his fortune. One day, while he was visiting his estate on horseback, he passed by a Christian monk named Lucian, who, having met a poor man and having no money himself, took off his garment and gave it to the man, whereupon a garment of radiant whiteness descended from heaven to cover him. This sign confirmed the admiration Epiphanius had felt for the Christian since his childhood, when he had been miraculously saved by a Christian from his bolting horse. Falling at Lucian's feet, he begged him to baptize him and to accept him into the angelic order. Baptized together with his sister by the bishop of the city, he gave away all his wealth and became a disciple of St. Hilarion, whose strict asceticism he followed for the rest of his life. The mysteries and figures of the Old Testament finding their full meaning in the light of Christ, he gave himself with renewed ardor to, the stu to study, and eager to learn about the lives of the monks of Egypt, undertook a long journey to, in Egypt, that land of predilection for the ascetic life. He also learned of the doctrines professed by the numerous and varied sects and heretical groups abounding there, thus gathering together the elements of his monumental treatise against all heresies which he wrote in the twilight of his life. Having only narrowly escaped from the machinations of the Manichaeans, he returned to Palestine four years later and founded a monastery near his native village, which he directed with great wisdom for thirty years. It is said that he made water flow from parched land and that the monks' cells were built by the Bedouins who had witnessed his miracles. By the invocation of the name of Christ and thanks to the gift of foreknowledge, Epiphanius cast out the demons that tormented the people of the village and some of his monks. He also delivered the region from a fearsome man-eating lion and was known for his abundant almsgiving. Yet it was above all by his gifts of teaching and interpreting the scriptures that he shone as a star over the whole church. Realizing the danger that Greek philosophy represented for the church as a source of multiple heresies, he devoted himself throughout his whole life to the battle in defense of the true faith. It is said that a famous philosopher came from Edessa to St. Epiphanius' monastery to discuss the Holy Scriptures with him. They debated for a long time about the mysteries of creation, Epiphanius holding the Holy Bible in his hand and the philosopher the writings of Hesiod. Although the light of the truth was clearly manifest, the philosopher remained obdurate, yet when he saw Epiphanius heal someone possessed by a demon through the invocation of the name of Christ, he renounced worldly wisdom and asked to be baptized. He was later ordained priest and became the saint's successor at the head of the monastery. After leaving his monastery to flee from human glory, Epiphanius went to Cyprus where he had the great joy of finding Saint Hilarion once more. Through the pressure placed on him by Saint Hilarion, Epiphanius accepted consecration as Bishop of Constantia, that is, Salamina, in 376. He saw in this elevation no occasion of vainglory, but rather a means of escaping from the intrigues of the semi-Aryan heretics who were strongly influential in Palestine. For 26 years he showed an exemplary zeal in the governing of his diocese and in the strengthening of the Orthodox faith, both in Cyprus and in the rest of the world. Numerous miracles strikingly confirmed his pastoral virtues and his paternal love for his flock. His generosity and interventions in support of those who were victims of injustice drew the hatred of some of his clergy upon him. Led by the deacon Carinus, who accused him of squandering the church's money. In 
spite of all the attempts of the latter to bring the saint into disrepute, Epiphanius always showed him the same benevolence, Carinus finally being chastised by God and coming to a miserable end. It is said that when the saint celebrated the divine liturgy, he would see the Holy Spirit descending on the gifts to sanctify them. One day he was deprived of this vision because of the unworthiness of one of his concelebrants. After having taken him aside, Saint Epiphanius implored God with tears and would not con continue the celebration until the divine glory showed itself once more. Very attentive to the moral integrity of his clergy, the holy prelate wanted his clerics by their virtues to be worthy adornments of the Bride of Christ. He therefore transformed his episcopal palace into a monastery where he lived the common life with more than 70 of his clergy. In 382, leaving the government of his diocese to St. Philon of Carpasia, St. Epiphanius traveled to Rome in the company of St. Jerome and Paulinus of Antioch with the aim of resolving the Antiochian schism in favor of the latter. They stayed in St. Paula's house, and the saint's biography recounts that he worked striking miracles there and healed the sister of the co-emperors Arcadius and Honorius. Returning to Cyprus at the time of a terrible famine, he gave the people the wheat he had bought from those who had a monopoly with gold acquired after receiving a vision. In his zeal to cast out all trace of Hellenism from Christian theology, St. Epiphanius concentrated his efforts particularly against the doctrines of Origen, at that time very much in favor among the monks of Palestine. In 393, preaching in Jerusalem on the feast of the dedication of the Church of the Resurrection, he proclaimed that Origen was the father of Arianism and of every heresy. The same evening, Patriarch John, whom Epiphanius reproached for his sympathy with the Origenists, replied by attacking the anthropomorphists, the adversaries of the allegorical exegesis of scripture held in high esteem by the great Alexandrian doctor. The quarrel grew bitter and became inflamed, especially when St. Jerome took Epiphanius' side against Patriarch John and his own former friend, Rufinus of Aquilia. Leaving the tormented city, Epiphanius spent some time in his monastery in Eleftheropolis, then returned to his diocese, without, however, abandoning the struggle in which his ardent character and his simplicity had led him to take up an extreme position. The torch of the anti-Originist struggle then passed to Theophilus, Archbishop of Alexandria. He, having once been a, a, a disciple of Origen, had become his ferocious and implacable enemy through his desire to pour out his bitterness against four brothers of noble birth, known as the Long Brothers because of their height, who, preferring Hezekiah to ecclesiastical honors, had left his clergy without his honest authorization to become monks in Nitria. Pursued by the archbishop, they took refuge in Constantinople in the hope of gaining support for their cause from St. John Chrysostom. Using the occasion to accuse Chrysostom, of whom he was jealous, of being the protector of the Originist heresy, Theophilus addressed himself to Epiphanius. Ill informed about the situation and of Theophilus's real motives, the elderly bishop, believing himself to be engaged in the defense of orthodoxy, went to Constantinople after having condemned Originism in a synod of the bishops of Cyprus. Welcomed with reverence by St. John, he refused all his proffered marks of honor and went to stay in a private house. He then proceeded to ordain a deacon in one of the local monasteries. St. Chrysostom let him know that he was extremely grieved to learn that his brother in the episcopate had thus acted in contravention of the holy canons, and that he had stirred up the people against their pastor without reason. Saint Epiphanius then decided to return home to cease being a source of discord, and he left the capital shortly before the unholy synod of the oak which deposed Saint John Chrysostom. He gave his soul into God's hands during the sea crossing, after having exhorted his disciples to preserve the purity of the true faith and to keep themselves from the snares of riches and of calumny. When the ship arrived in Salamina, an immense crowd bearing candles in their hands welcomed its shepherd and accompanied him with tears to the church where for seven days a great part of the population of Cyprus came to venerate his body. The veneration of Saint Epiphanius spread rapidly 
and his tomb still remains one of the most devoutly observed pilgrimage places on the island, of which he is the holy patron, along with St. Barnabas. Heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every impurity and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, the age of the Things has revealed thee to thy flock as a rule of faith, an icon of meekness and a teacher of temperance. For this cause thou hast achieved the heights by humility, riches by poverty. O Father and Hierarch Epiphanius, Intercede with Christ God that our souls be saved. The victorious right arm has in godly manner been glorified in strength, for as Almighty, O Immortal One, it smote the adversary, fashioning anew the path of the deep for the Israelites. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Having lived faithfully under the law of the letter given by the servant, thou became eminent when thou didst submit to the yoke of the Master, O all blessed Epiphanius, and thou became a luminary enlightening the ends of the world. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Possessed by love for the divine law and preferring what is just over the unjust, O Father Epiphanius, Thou didst symbolically receive the saving faith of the Trinity through God's foreknowledge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The godly man became the physician of thy flesh and thy soul, slain together with thy beast of burden, the violence of the passions, and healing also the unbelief of thy soul. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. He that formerly was seen in the form of God, wholly renewed my form taking all of it upon himself, and in a manner worthy of God, he dwelt in thy womb, O pure one. Wherefore, with the faithful, all glorify thee as the Theotokos. O thou who alone knowest the infirmity of our mortal essence, and hast taken on the form thereof in thy compassion, gird me with power from on high, that I may cry to thee, Holy is the living temple of thine ineffable glory, O friend of man. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. When thou sawest with thy bodily eyes that threadbare garment given to him that bagged arms, in spirit thou sawest him that gave it clothed to the luminous robe, and thou wast enlightened by divine grace as touching the blameless faith. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Hearkening to the words of true religion, thou didst abhor matter and its long for the immaterial life, 
and taking with thee thy sister, since she both partook of thy lineage, and she shared thy disposition, you are shown to be a blessed pair. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Turning away from dead thoughts, and longing to serve the living God, thou didst hasten in faith to the house of God, where thou didst receive a clear token when thy dead sandals fell from thy feet, O all-blessed and most happy Epiphania, Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Holyly thou gavest birth to the Holy of Holies, Christ, to rest in the Holies, O holy tabernacle of holiness. Unto him we cry, Holy is the living temple of thine unutterable glory, O friend of man. Thou hast filled the church with godly doctrines of pure orthodoxy, O wise Father. With thy teachings thou dravest of heresies, and thou hast finished the course of true piety, and like great Paul the Apostle hast kept the faith. In thy holy mediations, O Epiphanius, Entreat Christ God to grant great mercy unto us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O all pure and only Virgin Mother, as the words divine and sacred dwelling, thus surpasses the angels in purity. But as for me who surpass all in sinfulness, and by my sins of the flesh am defiled and stained, wash me clean with the divine waters of thy mighty prayers, and grant great mercy unto me, O modest maid. Habakkuk, gazing with the eyes of foresight upon thee, the mountain overshadowed by the grace of God, prophesied that the Holy One of Israel would come forth from thee for our salvation and restoration. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Approaching baptism as a suppliant and servant, through it thou was adopted as a son of Epiphanius, and truly became an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ, passing thy life for him in a God-befitting manner. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for the us. The shepherd sees thee made very fair of countenance, with thy glorious head marvellously crowned with unspeakable glory and a majestic crown. The symbols of thy pure heart, O celebrated Epiphania. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Thou wast a vassal of divine grace, O righteous Epiphanius, and thou didst openly scatter fleeting riches for the sake of Christ, and like a sagacious judge, didst treasure up in the heavens eternal wealth which cannot be plundered. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Putting off the mind of youth in thy youth, and being instructed in the fear of God by wise and prudent elders, O blessed one, thou becames a lover of wisdom by meditation on the words of the Spirit. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O all hymned Theotokos, thou holy of holies, expectation of the nations and salvation of the faithful, from thee sprang forth the Redeemer and life giver and Lord, for the salvation of us who him thee. O Christ, who hast enlightened the ends of the world with the radiance of thy coming, and hast illumined them with thy cross, with the light of thy divine knowledge, enlighten the hearts of those who hymn thee in orthodox manner. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Thou didst righteously straighten thy belly with bread and water, using salt as seasoning, and thou hast sway over the passions of the flesh, O Epiphanius, imitating while in the body the life of the bodiless host. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for Lord, us. Thou didst take compassion on those consumed with thirst in the burning heat, O blessed Epiphanius, when as an excellent servant, imitating thy master, 
Thou didst change wine into water, beginning thy miracles gloriously. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Evading the empty and paltry glory of man, thou madest thy dwelling in the wilderness as thy master did, and wisely went forth to temptations like the masters, having thine infirmity invisibly strengthened for wrestling against demons. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. But a word thou didst contain, the divine word in thy womb, in a manner beyond words, O Theotokos. Beseech him, therefore, to free thy servants from brutish acts and deadly pleasures. The lowest abyss has encompassed us, and there is none to deliver us. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Save thy people, O our God, for thou art the strength and amendment of the weak. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. The descendants of Hagar, those imitators of the demons, compass thee about. But thou, in imitation of thy master, didst good unto him that opposed thee. For him that was blind in one eye, thou didst enable to see with both. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Thy fashioner, who had taken up his rest in thee, showed thee forth as an instrument of the Spirit, and as a god in the tents of the Arabs, like Moses before Pharaoh, in very truth thou didst imitate his way. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When the evil spirit was cast out, it troubled the ruler of the Assyrians, but became a herald of thy virtue and divine grace, O Father. For God knows to glorify them that glorify him. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The forefathers of our race rejoice in thee, O Immaculate Virgin, since through thee they have again received Eden, which they lost by transgression. For thou art pure both before childbearing and after giving birth. Let us the faithful duly praise the most wondrous and sacred pair of hierarchs, even Germanus, together with the godly Epiphanius. For these righteous saints of God burnt the tongues of the godless with the sacred teachings which they most wisely expounded. To all those who in orthodox belief do ever hear the great mystery of piety. Let us worthily honor that holy pair as the comeliness of priests and the glory of the orthodox, for they are towers of safety for us in every hour against visible and invisible foes, unbending pillars of the faith and the divine adornment of the church, wherewith attired she rightly divides and joyfully cries. My spirit is verily rejoiced within me, since I have received back the garment which I once wore, which heretics had rent asunder, for they would not hymn the great mystery of piety. The great mystery of piety. O Theotokos, we the faithful perceive thee to be a noetic furnace, for as the supremely exalted one save the three youths, in thy womb the praised and most glorious God of our fathers, holy renewed the world. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Receiving from divine grace the gift of miracles, O Father, thou didst distribute healings as a gift unto all that asked of thee, even as the Master commanded, who is the praised and supremely glorious God of our Father. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for the us. The King of the Assyrians fell prostrate at thy feet, O Epiphanius, since even an adversary knows to reverence virtue. For every man falls down before those in whom Christ has taken up his rest, who is the praised and supremely glorious God of our Father. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Speech falls silent, O Epiphanius, most blessed, and able to tell in full the multitude of thine achievements and miracles, which exceed the sons and who granted thee by Christ, the praised and supremely glorious God of our Father. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O triply shining, single, incomprehensible abyss of infinite light, look upon them that hymn thee, 
O supremely exalted and beginningless sovereignty, Father, Son, and co-eternal Spirit, Thou praised and supremely glorious God of our Father, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Jacob prophetically perceived Thee as the ladder of Theotokos, for through Thee he who is transcendently exalted was seen by man upon earth, and he dwelled among us as it seemed good to him, the praised and supremely glorious God of our Father. In the furnaces in a porch the children of Israel sparkled brighter than gold with the beauty of piety, saying, Bless the Lord, all ye works of the Lord, praise and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Thou didst clearly convict the error of heresies with thy speech, and didst banish it with the light of true religion, O Epiphanius. As thou didst cry, Bless the Lord, all your works of the Lord, praise and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for thou us. Thou was raised up on a lofty throne, for having reigned over the passions and gained dominion over the flesh, thou didst shepherd the flock of Christ while crying, Bless the Lord, all your works of the Lord, praise and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Let all nature endowed with understanding and reason dance for joy on the memory of the hierarch and servant of Christ, while crying out in faith, Bless the Lord, all your works of the Lord. Praise and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. We bless Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Teaching of God in a God-pleasing manner, thou hast bequested thy theology to all as an anchor of doctrines, by which we sing, Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord, praise and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Rejoice, O glorious throne of God. Rejoice, O rampart of the faithful. Through thee, Christ, the light is risen up upon those in darkness who call thee blessed, and they cry, Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. The burning bush that was not consumed was a type of thy pure childbirth, and now we entreat thee to extinguish the furnace of temptations that rages against us, O Theotokos, that we may magnify thee unceasingly. O Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for us. Thy life, the definition of activity, and thy words, the definition of divine wisdom, have been left to heritage the truly godly-minded people, O blessed and celebrated Father Epiphanius. Wherefore, while extolling thee, we call thee blessed as is due. Holy Father Epiphanius, pray to God for o us. O glorious Epiphanius, defend Christ, bride the church, and since thou is boldness with the master and friend of man, but thine intercessions calm the savage tempers that is raised up against her. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Holy King of kings, Trinity of single sovereignty, who rules over all, by the supplications of Epiphanius, grant to them that praise thee forgiveness of failings and freedom from temptations throughout the Lord. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All the scope of praise is overcome by the greatness of thy glory, O all pure virgin. <laughs> Nevertheless, of thine own kindness, accept this laudation, O Lady Theotokos, offered to thee with love by thine unworthy servants. Ye faithful, come with songs of praise. Let us revere that most divine and sacred pair of wise hierarchs, even the hallowed Germanus and godly Epiphanius, for they dispersed and chased away the moonless night of heresies, and they enlightened creation with rays of godly knowledge. Wisdom, most holy mother, 
Father of God, save us. More honourable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, O oh, oh, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, all through God, the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy life, giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, and the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Cisarius the Great, Brandon the Navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, our protectors and our benefactors. With the prayers of our Father among the saints, Epiphanius, Bishop of Constantia in Cyprus, with the prayers of our Father among the saints, Germanus, Archbishop of Constantinople, with the prayers of our righteous father Theodore of Cythera, who reposed in peace. With the prayers of the holy new martyr John of Valachia, who was perfected in martyrdom by hanging in Constantinople in 1662. With the prayers of the holy martyrs Nereus and Achilles of Rome. With the prayers of our righteous father Polybius, bishop of Cyprus. With the prayers of the holy Haramata Hermogenes, patriarch of Moscow and all Russia. With the prayers of our righteous father Dionysius, Archimandrite of the Holy Trinity, Saint Serge Lavra. With the prayers of our Holy Mother, Rictrud, and those with them whose memory we keep this day. With the prayers of the Holy Ancestors of God, Ioachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. Let the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.